and we have to really escalate the noise we make so that we'll be heard. Welcome to Gay USA. I'm Andy Hum. I'm Ann Northrup, but uh, where are we? Uh, I'm in my bedroom. Where are you? <laughs> I refuse to answer on the grounds that it may incriminate. We're, we're coming to you by StreamYard because I was under the weather yesterday and just getting over a cold, and I felt better not to uh, be in the same studio with folks. So here I am. And we are eternally grateful. You're welcome. And and let's get let's get to it. It's it's LGBTQ History Month. And October 11th is National Coming Out Day. And it's also National Bullying Prevention Month. And the best way to do that, of course, is to vote in November. Okay. Uh, and November Election Day is just five weeks away, four and a half probably by the time you see this, November 5th, or if you're voting early, uh, much sooner. Mine is in the mail today. I saw it in my uh, uh, inbox. Uh, okay. Trump. Uh, and Vance are campaigning with off the charts anti-LGBTQ evangelical groups, shamelessly. And of course, I assume we're gonna start by uh, talking about the vice presidential debate. We can, yes, I, uh, although our issues, uh, well, we'll talk about it. In uh, Texas Attorney General, the wicked Ken Paxton and 22 other GOP attorneys general have intensified their assault on transgender healthcare. A drag queen, self-avowed, seeks the Florida House seat from Key West. You'd think they'd have a chance. LGBTQ leaders are among those calling on indicted New York City Mayor Eric Adams to resign. It's quite a large chorus at this point. Uh, an LGBTQ student group in Iowa, a middle school group, I think, was attacked at a homecoming parade. A bunch of cowards. Uh, legendary performance artist Justin Vivian Bond was named a MacArthur genius. Well deserved. Uh, activists in New York went out last week to protest Uganda's kill the gays law. Two. Out gay Broadway legends have died. I'm going to tell you about them. Gavin Creel and Ken Page. Gene Smart hosted the season opening edition of Saturday Night Live. Uh, sort of paid tribute to her lesbian fan base. It was a little snarky, but we'll debate the ins and outs of that. Well, uh, how about that debate? Well, I was watching it with a couple of friends who were very depressed at uh, Tim Walls not being uh, sort of sharper and being a little bumbling. But as I said to them, wait till the reviews come out because we were all shocked at the reviews of uh, Kamala with her debate with Trump since she started so slowly in that. And sure enough, the, uh, the assessments this morning, most of them were that Yes, Vance was more self-possessed and strong, but really Waltz won on uh, substance if points. If you were actually listening to what they were saying. Trying. You know, I <laughs> but mean, I, that's the other thing. I think there were probably just three of us listening to that. And mm -hmm. most people who, most people probably didn't watch. And even if they did watch, what they're looking at is uh, the post-game reviews. So I think the headlines that came out of it were that uh, Waltz was much more substantive on the issues, uh, tried to be cordial, and Vance just lied, lied, lied throughout it. They were trying to be Midwestern nice. Well, Vance did lie, and it was frustrating not to have him uh, caught on that more. And I missed discussions of uh, Trump racism, homophobia, bullying. I would have liked to see the moderators go into that, but they were trying so hard to be, you know, smart people that they really missed all the heart and soul of this campaign. Our, our issues uh, didn't come up. Not at all. Well, and I mean, we're certainly affected by the uh, Affordable Care Act, 
and we'll talk more about that later. But uh, of course, we're, we're affected by all of this. But for a campaign that has decided to make its core issue uh, slamming trans people and trying to smear everyone else with the same brush, uh, well, it was interesting that they did not bring that up. Well, yes, uh, Trump is now running an ad with picturing Kamala, Kamala Harris with uh, Sam Brinton, uh, the disgraced former, I think, Obama aide or something, who, you know, uh, was a, is a trans person and uh, rather and identifiable in the picture. And so they're running on anti-trans stuff. But of course, you know, you only have to look into the recent past. Of course, Vance, had it, as we've told you, had a close friend who was trans and they were they got along nicely until he came out against transgender rights recently and uh trump in 2012 when he was running the his miss universe pageant uh, welcomed trans content contestants into his pageant and said caitlin jenner can use any bathroom in trump tower that they want to yeah yeah all that stuff but again none of that matters i mean the, come, come on the stuff that trump's running on now which is, is really just violence. We're, you know, going to have the cops beat people up and that's going to stop things. I and mean, it goes on and on and on and on and on. And they didn't, get, they didn't get to any of that in the, no, in, no. In, in the debate. And, you know, do you disavow of this uh, violence, uh, Mr. Vance? Uh, and these are really important issues that just got overlooked. And, and then the CBS executives just before the debate said there will be no fact checking. We don't like what ABC did. That was too intrusive. No there, fact there, check. There was a little and there was a little, but not much. Yeah. Uh, then Vance complained about it. Did you hear him say, I thought there wasn't supposed to be any fact checking? You know, I, well, we thought you might tell the truth, but you're not. So uh, now let's look at these candidates if we can. Uh, Trump. Trump has some groupies from the Word of Faith Church in Spindale, North Carolina, who follow him around, and he calls them those beautiful ladies. They look charming enough. They're known for cultish behavior, including screaming at congregants who stray from their orthodoxy. They went after a single mother this way. They beat a 19-year-old congregant for being gay in their quest to save him. And Trump himself is pushing more and more violence, as I've said, that's as the way to solve society's ills, just beat people up. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then J.D. Vance is palling around with a, to call him a far right preacher is an understatement. Uh, this guy wants us all beaten up and dead and uh, uh, worse. Well, his name is Lance Wallnau, W-A-L-L-N-A-U who said that Vice President Harris used witchcraft in her debate with Trump. She calls Trump, he called, uh, oh, I'm sorry, he calls Trump a flawed but anointed leader. He now uh, holds get out the vote worship rallies in swing states and tells followers that Harris uses the spirit of Jezebel to deceive his voters. No comment from Vance about that. But Anne, you you were on the you were on the campaign trail this week uh, with uh, yes. Tammy Baldwin. Tell us about it. Well, I uh, friends were holding an event for Tammy Baldwin here in New York as as part of a fundraising tour she was doing, and I know Tammy a little, and uh, and I know the host of the party, so I went and was happy to spend a little time with her. I think she's doing okay these days. Uh, she's been up and down in the polls. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> I just uh, soaked, uh, sucked on a cough lozenge, so I'm not sure why I'm uh, coughing like this, but I'll try to stop it. Yeah. Um, Tammy is gave a very strong speech at this event, and I have seen her be a little softer in the past, and I really appreciated the fact that she was very... Uh, forthright and strong in her talk about opinions and her talk about her opponent, the rich guy from uh, California. Uh, yeah. I thought I thought she did a really good job. Good. And, you know, we, we of course hope uh, that Vice President Harris wins, but, you know, holding the Senate is less likely. It's, it's, it is possible if we come through and, you know, maybe Texas or Florida and, and 
or Montana comes back or something like that. But it's very tough. It's a very tough list. We're not picked to win the Senate. And the two U.S. senators who are likely to succeed Mitch McConnell as majority leader would not commit to holding confirmation hearings on Harris's Supreme Court nominees. They were talking about John Thune of South Dakota and John Cornyn of Texas. Um, they won't even promise a hearing on her Supreme Court nominees. They are promising obstruction. And that can extend to federal judges, cabinet appointments, sub-cabinet appointments that have to go through the Senate. So as a result, the Harris team is now reaching out to as many Biden cabinet members and sub-cabinet members that they can to say, can you stay on? We're not sure if we're going to be able to replace you if you don't. Well, why should the Republicans uh, uh, cooperate? They have learned that as they can be obstructionists like that and there is no punishment for them. Well, I'm just pointing this out to the American people, because if you do want government to function, you better vote Democrat this year. I'm serious. If you want if you want the government, to do, you know, uh, J.D. Vance keeps saying, oh, you you were in, you were in power all this time. Why didn't you do it? Now, she does. She, uh, she uh, balls and, and uh, uh, Harris. They, of course, bring up that uh, uh, Trump blocked the uh, immigration bill, but that but the Republicans block everything. They don't let anything get through. Probably. Well, all right. There's a lot more that the Democrats could be saying on that, including the fact that uh, Harris is not the president of the United States, and uh, they just have transferred all power to her in their rhetoric, which is completely inappropriate. But here's what I read this week that scared me. Uh, the, we have talked a lot all year about Project 2025 and the Heritage Foundation having written this 900-page plan for what they're going to do when the Republicans take over the government. And a lot of it is it's very concrete, but people have sort of looked at it and said, well, uh, what? And it includes things like we're going to get rid of all the uh, Democratic appointees in the government. We're going to clean it out. We're going to start over and just put our people in. And I think people sort of say, oh, come on. Well, okay. this week's report is that the Heritage Foundation has filed hundreds, hundreds of Freedom of Information Act uh, requests, whatever they are, uh, for information about current government employees by name, and they are seeking information for who has talked about diversity, equity, and inclusion, who has talked about pronouns, who has talked about LGBTQ stuff, and they are making a list, a specific list of government employees who have had any uh, tangential relationship to any of these issues, and they are going to get rid of all of them. They're it's relentless. very. They're working on it. This is not just oh, maybe we'll do something when we get in. No, they are working on it. Biden hasn't even gotten rid of Louis DeJoy in the post office after four years for. <laughs> his his job is probably safe. <laughs> I think he's okay, uh, but it's tremendously scary stuff. And uh, one of our viewers sent me a note about. Um, uh, something they saw on television, a political ad for Trump or Vance or both or whatever in Texas. And it was one of these heinous anti-trans ads. Yeah. And so the viewer wrote to the TV station and said, uh, you can't run this stuff. It is hate speech uh, and discriminatory. And I'm going to turn you in if you don't get this stuff off the air. And the TV station said, well, you'll have to take that up with the Federal Communications Commission because the law is that we have to run all political ads without exception and without editing. Uh, and the viewer said, come on, this is, uh, this is illegal stuff, they're saying. Uh, and it's very violent and it's going to uh, it's going to provoke violence. Well, so exactly. And this anti-trans stuff is when they're doing this, it's like. It's, it's to distract you, and it's almost all they got. And it didn't really work. It didn't work the last time in 2022. They spent they spent tens of millions, if not hundreds of millions of dollars on these kinds of ads. It didn't, it didn't work. Well, uh, I hope it doesn't work this time, but the issue has become more prominent and more concrete, and they've succeeded in scaring people about 
you know, trans girls on girls uh, softball teams and uh, men in girls restrooms. Exactly. So I, I, it's completely a fear mongering campaign. It's completely a lie, but uh, they know how to push lies well, relentlessly. Yeah. But you know, there was a, a a more sedate and sober forum on sort of on the state of the nation. And uh, a Wisconsin mom at the forum said what she really fears for her children. Let's go to the videotape. Tell us your name and where you're from. Hi, I'm Danielle, and I'm from Elm Grove. Um, I grew up in Tosa. I also went to Marquette. We have a lot of Marquette uh, alums around here. Um, And I have three young kids. I have a seven-year-old, an almost five-year-old, and a two-year-old. And I think one of the things that we haven't really addressed is what is really what will keep our kids safe. We've heard a lot of rhetoric about, I'm afraid of seeing my kids seeing a drag queen, which I have taken my kids to drag queen story hour. It is like going to any other princess party. Like there is nothing sexual about a drag event that is geared towards children. If you would take your kids to see Peter Pan the musical on Broadway, Mary Martin played Peter Pan in the 1950s. There is nothing scary about it. What is scary is the idea that I think every single day when I drop my kids at school, will I see them come home or will someone come into the school and shoot them? And I also think as my kids get older, will they be made to feel othered because people were afraid of their self-expression and so then they will harm themselves. Um, my dad died of suicide about 11 years ago. So um, thank you. And he was very easily able to access a gun in this state, um, despite having a history of mental illness. So when I think of things that are scary, when I put my kids to bed at night, I'm not afraid of a drag queen story hour. I'm afraid of what's actually going to happen to them. I am afraid of what their planet will look like in the next 20 years because we're not taking care of it. And I think that the rhetoric that we have that makes these things seem scary because they're hot button issues are, I will say primarily on the right. I am a liberal person, I am a Democrat, but I do see a lot of different news sources and I am not seeing the type of fear mongering in any other news source than particularly right-wing news sources, and it is causing us to not really focus on the issues that are going to keep our kids safe. I don't know what she's worried about. Um, uh, Senator Vance has said, all we have to do is fortify the windows of the schools. <laughs> that was his answer to school shootings. Yes, I know. Uh, she's right, and she's tremendously moving and eloquent about it. And uh, I'd like to see that turn into uh, an important ad that's broadcast all over the place. So we can win Wisconsin. Win Wisconsin. Well, let's move on a little bit. I don't want to let this week go by without wishing a happy birthday, uh, 100th birthday, to Jimmy Carter. Uh, he's hanging in there so he can vote for Kamala Harris. He was a one term president, elected in 76. Uh, yeah, because he, he was too concerned about human rights. Well, he didn't, you know, he didn't get us into a war over the Iran hostage crisis, which a lot of people were agitating for. Uh, he granted amnesty to draft evaders. He gave back the Panama Canal. He established departments of energy and education. He created the Superfund law to clean up toxic waste. And he was the first administration to allow gay leaders to meet in the White House. He wasn't there. This was not that meeting. This is this was earlier where he met with um, Harvey Milk at a fundraiser. Harvey scraped together a hundred bucks in 1976 so he could shake hands with Jimmy Carter and talk to him. But before that fundraiser, Jimmy Carter declared, I am for the, uh, what was then the Federal Gay Rights Bill, the equality, what we call the Equality Act. Uh, He said he separated his evangelical faith from his politics. Um, You know, uh, I told you uh, during that campaign, I met him in 76 when I was working for NBC and he's waiting to go on because he won the primary. He's going to win the nomination. But I said, Governor, I hope you'll do okay by the gay people. And he said, well, okay, I will. I will. And, you know, did he do do that much? I don't think he heard us. 
he came out against the Briggs Initiative when he was president in 1978, although Ronald Reagan did too later. Um, but he and he had this unsurpassed uh, post presidency, and he's still alive. <laughs> yes, I hope he's voted early. <laughs> I told you, Mike. Although his uh, grandson says that he's uh, getting stronger, not weaker. So something about surviving. You know that he's been in hospice this long. Yeah. Well, you never know. Yeah. All right. Um, well, you know, in Florida, we told you how they banned all mention of sex and sex education. This is also the state that bans all mention of climate change and what used to be called science courses in uh, schools, but are now just DeSantis indoctrination sessions. And their ignorance didn't stop the devastating hurricane, Helene, that has killed now more than 175 people and caused billions in property damage. Yeah, it's a great tragedy and uh, people are scrambling to do anything they can and just it's hitting yeah. places that have never been hit by this kind of stuff before. Yes, and uh, I worry, al along with, of course, being concerned about people's lives and homes and everything else. You know, the federal government does not have a magic wand to wave over this. And will people in North Carolina or other states uh, blame the federal government uh, in the election? Well, Trump would like them to. Uh, DeSantis is uh, also misusing public agencies to try to defeat the Amendment 4 in Florida, which would prohibit government interference with the right to abortion before viability, about 24 weeks, which is the Roe standard, not the six-week limit that DeSantis imposed. And he's been sending law enforcement to intimidate voters who signed the petitions to get this on the ballot. He's also using a state-run agency. Uh, uh, for health care administration to advertise that the initiative threatens women's safety, spending millions on these ads. The ACLU is suing over that. Now, this initiative needs 60% to pass down there. Yes. Florida. And uh, Dr. Rachel Levine of the federal government, Health and Human Services, the highest ranking uh, out trans official in the federal government, was in Florida recently to speak and uh, anti-trans activists went and yelled at her and interrupted her speech. Now, theoretically, I'm not against uh, interrupting the speeches of officials. I've done it myself. But uh, in this case, there's no reason to do that. Right. And uh, it was not a good thing. And Trump put a picture of her and Harris in one of his ads. Uh, also in Florida, the state House of Representatives district, and this is the, for the state, that includes Key West, and they're in Southern Florida, is held by a Republican who is being challenged by Michael Travis, also known as Erica Rose, a drag artist affiliated with the Gay Business Guild of Key West, running to uh, counter the DeSantis GOP attacks on trans rights and women's rights that Republicans use to just, again, to distract us, she says, from housing crisis, environmental crisis, said, even if not elected, um, as long as one person who feels they don't belong sees that a drag queen from Key West is fighting for them to live their truth, it, it makes a difference. Uh, Travis is also open about uh, having HIV. And makes a difference to non-trans people who become more acclimated to the idea of trans people as human beings living in society and doing things like running for office. Yeah. Yes. And in D.C., a good story, although it took long enough, a trans woman was awarded $930,000 for workplace discrimination at McDonald's. This was an 11-year legal fight for Diana Portillo Medrano. She had reported the harassment to the D.C. Office of Human Rights and then was fired, and they used the pretext, well, you're an undocumented, so you're out, even though that's most of whom they hire there. Well, let's move to Virginia for a couple of less happy stories. An anti-trans teacher there uh, yeah. was awarded $575,000 in a settlement. She had been fired. Wait a minute. Was it she or he? Anyway, the teacher was fired for refusing. French teacher, he. 
he uh, uh, to Peter, Peter uh, Vlary for refusing to acknowledge a trans student by their uh, new pronouns. The the student has a legal name change, and the teacher refused to respect that, claiming uh, religious freedom for themselves. And free speech. Free speech. Uh, and won their lawsuit or got a settlement, settled the lawsuit for $575,000. Well, Governor, Governor Yunkin down there ordered teachers to use students' legal names and pronouns associated with biological sex. <laughs> yeah, but this is the trans student's legal name, which is not being respected. But my uh, uh, well, nominee... the teacher says, I'll use the name. I just won't use the pronouns. Because then I would, then I'd get out of favor with my lord. Well, would uh, his lord respect the new name? I, it's, it's, it's. <laughs> you know what? It's a, it's a, it's a tremendous lack of uh, compassion and politeness on the part of these people. Well, I, and we have a nominee for candidate of the week, and that is the uh, House candidate, the Republican House candidate in Virginia, who is a single man but is doing campaign ads with a neighbor woman and her kids, making it look like they're his family. <laughs> He's done print ads family. and video ads. Wow. wow. Uh, well, it's like, it's like when Ed, it's like when Ed Koch was running for mayor, he grabbed the hand of Bess Meyerson and paraded around with her. Yeah, but he didn't claim to be married to her or to have kids by her. No, he was trying to get over the. Uh, I know, I gay, know. Gay inference. No, okay. So I guess there's a long history of this. Yes. Um, <laughs> let's let's talk about what the Republican attorneys general are doing, uh, led yeah. by the wicked Ken Paxton in Texas. They're suing over a rule change, federal rule change that added gender dysphoria to the list of disabilities protected from discrimination under Section 504 of the Rehabilitation Act of 1973 and the Americans with Disabilities Act of 1990. So these AGs are arguing that the rule exceeds HHS authority since gender identity disorders weren't included when they were, this, these laws were enacted, both in Republican administrations, by the way, with the Democratic Congress. So there are many updates to the rule that uh, made in May, but this is the only one that they object to. Um, Shocking. LGBTQ plus affirming placement for youth. And uh, uh, oh, there, Paxton is also suing over the requirement that states prove LGBTQ affirming placement for youth in foster care. So. Yeah, no, he's very in favor of having LGBTQ hating foster parents bring in LGBTQ foster kids. Right. And meanwhile, uh, in a different suit, 22, uh, that first one is Ken Paxton and 16 other attorneys general, and a coalition of 22 attorneys general is threatening the American Academy of Pediatrics. They claim they're violating consumer protection laws by approving uh, trans care. Uh, they have no legal basis for their threat. But they're just into the bullying. Well, and no, they said they're violating consumer protection laws. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, since Texas denies gender changes on driver's licenses since last month, they've directed the Department of Public Service employees to contact an internal email address anytime someone with a court order requested a gender ID change, giving the individual's name and ID number. So the public got a hold of the email address, and they've been flooding it with complaints about the policy change and spam. In 700 pages of emails, there was only one actual report of someone seeking to make a gender change marker. Uh, some of the spam was creative, signing up the department for Queer Me Now, a gay porn blog, but mostly people were calling Texas out for its, what well, this is fascism, uh, compiling a secret list of trans people. So. Keep up the rebellion, Texas. It's part of, your, part of your heritage. Let's move to the Supreme Court. Well, yes. Okay. Go ahead. Well, well 
a couple of things. Ron Wyden, a Senate Democrat from Oregon, has proposed uh, some new laws to uh, improve the Supreme Court since we seem stuck in a gridlock of uh, right wing nonsense. It's a sweeping reform. And I'm only obviously it doesn't have any chance of passing now, but it, it, it articulates what we need. Adding six justices, requiring justices to undergo audits, removing roadblocks to the confirmation process. Um, uh, he would uh, not, uh, each president over 12 years would nominate justices in the first and third year of their terms. It would require a two thirds vote of the high court and circuit court appeals to overturn a law that was passed by Congress. It would require a vote on a nominee in, on, in a committee within 180 days. It would expand the federal circuits from 13 to 15. They've been expanded. We started with six, that's what Washington had, and he had six Supreme Court justices. It's an, these are arbitrary numbers, although they have something to do with population. So, and it would allow a two thirds vote of the court to force a fellow or sister justice to recuse themselves from a case. Um, and also to make, also make them reveal how they vote on the shadow docket, this uh, mysterious process that they use to kill things. So that's good. And Rhode Island Senators Sheldon Whitehouse and Catherine Cortez, Master of Nevada, have reintroduced their bill to give Congress greater latitude to check Supreme Court, uh, court uh, rulings. Now, it is important to keep in mind when thinking about things like this, what would happen if, uh, if, if the right wing uh, continues to have power and more power, and would any of this redound to their benefit and make sure that these are neutral enough that uh, what it succeeds in doing is breaking the gridlock rather than tilting to one side or the other. And I think this is a pretty neutral set of proposals. But meanwhile, in the Senate, uh, Senators Cruz and Lindsey Graham are pounding judicial nominees currently uh, on their support of the Equality Act. Well, that, one, of them, one of them had been in Congress and he voted for it. Yeah. So that, of course, is uh, Satan's work and they will work to keep that person off the bench uh, for being such a heinous uh, human being. And they can't do that now because Democrats have the votes, and that's why we need to elect uh, Democrats in Texas and in uh, Nebraska. Okay. Well, actually, it would be an independent in, Texas, in Nebraska who's got a close shot there to get rid of the Republican, and maybe hold on to John Tester. And don't let that Hogan get elected in Maryland. What are you thinking? Um. I think Marylanders are seeing through that. You know, he appears to be a nice guy. He's a lot more right wing than uh, he lets on. And I think Maryland is kind of hip to that. So I'm, yeah, I know. Hope so. I, Hope so. Uh, whatever. The, the point is, we are not uh, firmly in winning uh, space for any of these people. And don't take anything for granted and get right. out there and vote and register your friends and do all of that. I'm going to vote today because I see my ballots. My ballots coming today. New York okay. City Mayor Eric Adams. You've you've heard about this. It's a national story uh, that he's been indicted. And, you know, he didn't have much LGBTQ support before his indictment on fraud charges. He started his administration in 2022 by appointing a whole raft of anti-LGBTQ bigots. We protested that, and he just said, "Oh, they've changed." Uh, and uh, we have to forgive them. I said, how they've changed. Let's talk. Can we talk to them? No, you can't talk to them. I mean, this is how he operates. It's all bluster and lies. And uh, so all, almost all the elected LGBTQ officials in the city and the clubs are calling on him to resign, which he says he won't. Um, and he you also said- Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez wants him to resign. She wanted them to resign before. Gary Nadler yeah. wants him to resign. Yes, yes. It's getting quite widespread. And yes. today, as we tape, uh, he was back in court and the prosecutors were saying, we're preparing more charges to throw at you. Absolutely. He, you know, he's always been associating with rogues and grifters and it's, it's, it's disgraceful. But he says he welcomes the support being offered by former President Trump. <laughs> Shame on you, Eric. Yeah, exactly. 
Uh, and, uh, and if you wonder about the impact of some of these anti-trans laws and rhetoric and everything, the Trevor Project is out with a new large survey of like 30,000 people and have found that anti-LGBTQ laws and rhetoric are producing a great uptick in suicide attempts by uh, LGBTQ youth. Uh, very depressing news and utterly predictable. Absolutely. And let's go to Marion, Iowa. The homecoming parade there included the Lindmar School District Gay Straight Alliance called Spectrum, um, who, who say they're, we're used to being ridiculed, but this year someone threw an open box cutter at them uh, and 10 plus kids were shouting slurs at them. We, had a, we have a picture of that? Or, or we a have a video. Uh yelling things like, I'm a homophobe, or I don't want your candy, just vile. The Linmar School District says an incident during a homecoming parade is now part of an ongoing investigation. According to the district, a few people ridiculed and threw items at one of the parade entries, the Linmar Spectrum. Yeah, Spectrum is the Gay Straight Alliance at the Linmar High School. And what happened during the parade yesterday has galvanized a wave of support for students in that LGBTQ plus group. KCRG TV 9's Jackson Valenti has been following the response to what happened. He is joining us now live in the studio. Jackson? Yeah, Jim, I talked to a Linmar parent who said the students who are part of Spectrum are used to being ridiculed. But yesterday, she says they were put in danger because of items like this, an open box cutter that was thrown at the group. I cannot fathom being a child going to homecoming and not feeling safe. Jennifer Pitkin is the mother of Ava, a student who marched with Spectrum, a student-run LGBTQ plus group at Linmar High School. While Ava and the other students were marching at Linmar's homecoming parade, Pitkin says a group of 10 or more kids started shouting slurs at them, and she says somebody threw this box cutter at the students. It didn't hit anybody, but it solidified Pitkin's fears of hostility against students at Pride events. I want you to stay at home. I want you to stay home. I want you to never go to a Pride parade again. My kid and these kids are not. They would not be held down. I promise you that they would not be held down because... After the knife was thrown, the students didn't leave. They kept marching. They chose to make a statement and saying, we're here, uh, we are to be valued, and, and we're in our community, and we're not going anywhere. Pitkin said even though she was worried for her daughter's safety, she's proud of the group's decision to keep going. She said many LGBTQ students face harassment and ridicule all the time, and she hopes this situation can be remembered as standing up against adversity. But there's a lot of other kids that are affected that don't speak up, and this is their norm. After the incident, Linmar Schools released this statement, saying in part, this behavior is unacceptable and does not reflect the values of our district. The school district said it is working with Marion Police in the investigation into that incident. In the studio, Jackson Valenti, KCRG TV 9 News. They kept marching. Yes. Uh, and in Marshall, Minnesota, a straight principal of a middle school was fired. Uh, because she put up pride flags and helped start a gay straight alliance in the school and the well she was she was she was uh, removed from her position she's still in the system but uh but yeah, yes she's not the, principal the principal still working in the school system and so she filed a, a claim of discrimination uh there she is uh, and she was rejected by the court <laughs> which said that school officials are allowed to be hostile to her views and uh, and that they they were not discriminating against her uh, in Title IX because she's uh, a straight woman, cis woman, and that she doesn't have free speech uh, rights in her job. Tell it to, uh, you know, the, the teacher who claimed free speech rights and uh, and got a big settlement in Virginia. So that's Mary Kay Thomas. The judge, uh, Schultz, uh, was a George Bush appointee. He's the chief judge of the district. He was a founding associate dean at the right wing University of St. Thomas School of Law, this Thomas More stuff, which is all part of the right wing. Depressing. All right, let's, uh, let's go on. Uh, well, uh, 
more sad news in Palm Springs, California. Yes. Eduardo Joel, 58 years old, who was one of the hosts of Extreme Makeover Home Edition, was stabbed to death uh, by uh, the alleged perpetrator, Richard Gonzalez, 34, a uh, very violent uh, murder. Details the, to come. Uh, well, the police say the men were, quote, associates, whatever that means. So it's really yeah. unclear about the nature of the relationship. Eduardo was an out gay man. Uh, you know, was this a boyfriend? Was it a pickup? Was it something else? We don't know. But he was he was a prominent and beloved person and has been murdered. And in Roseville, California, three hate crime suspects, uh, they you know went to the store. One of them went to the register, tore down a rainbow flag at Blaze Pizza restaurant. And then they got into a fight, this assault of the workers. It was captured on phone uh, video. One employee had to be taken away in an ambulance, hospitalized briefly with a concussion and head trauma, and police are pursuing the suspects. And in the continuing saga of hypocrisy, uh, in Louisiana, the founder and head of the Lakeside Christian Academy, uh, Pastor John Raymond, a uh, MAGA candidate for office, it turns out has been convicted of repeated child abuse and cruelty. He's he's an anti-LGBT guy who talks about, you know, how crazy we are, and he's out there uh, cruelly abusing children. Well, and, you know, Donald Trump cruelly abuses women and has been convicted of it and maybe the next president if we don't stop him. We told you about uh, how uh, last week how Kasim Omar uh, who was shot in 2022, died of the wounds in Columbus, Ohio on September 6th. And we are going to include in our email a video of um, her telling her story. Just go, go to our website, gayusatv.org, sign up for our emails, and we give you these extras. And part of that is about how her family could not come visit from a Kenya refugee camp uh, before she died. And in New York last week, uh, activists were out protesting the anti-LGBTQ law in Uganda. Uh, they went to, the, during UN week, there's Amanda Lug, uh, and uh, I know who that is. Uh, oh, uh, yeah, uh, the name will come to me. Uh, they're outside the Uganda mission for a demonstration. Uh, they want the World Bank to stop financing uh, Uganda. They promised to stop when the law was passed, but now they're about to restart financing of uh, Uganda. Yeah. We told you how the General Theological Seminary Episcopalian, and right here in Chelsea, down the block from us, planned to lease a, a good portion of the school uh, to the School of Sacred Music founded by a right-wing anti-LGBTQ funder. And that raised alarms. There was a big community meeting. Somebody stood up at the meeting and said, I think we can find somebody else to do this. And somebody else stood up and said, well, and they got together and they found out that Vanderbilt University from Tennessee was seeking space in New York because you know, it was founded by a, New, by a New Yorker, essentially, Cornelius Vanderbilt. You know him as the ancestor of Anderson Cooper. Anyway, they've signed a 99-year lease and uh, everybody's happy again. Yes. Solutions are possible. There, there's a gay angle, a semi-gay angle to the Sean Combs Diddy scandal that's gotten him indicted. Uh, a male sex worker has come forward with a videotape of one of Diddy's freak-offs, drug-fueled orgies that got Diddy arrested for sexual abuse, illegal drugs, and sex trafficking. Diddy was allegedly uh, orchestrating sex between male and female sex workers while he watched and pleasured himself. Diddy's, liar, Diddy's lawyer said... We can't get so puritanical to think that somehow sex is a bad thing, because if it was, there would be no people. Uh, 120 people are set to sue Diddy over sexual abuse. Uh, victims range from age 9 to 38, 60 men and 60 women, and some of the uh, suits are going to include household names. Diddy is accused of grooming rapper Usher and Justin Bieber. Uh, the nine-year-old was a boy who uh, said he was sexually abused by Diddy. Uh, we'll see where these stories turn out, but it's a, it's a terrible picture. 
Uh, all right. Um, we've lost this week. Yes. Ken, well, Ken Page. Ken Page has died at the age of 70. A native of St. Louis, he joined the cast of The Wiz in 1975 as the Lion. He soon originated the role, I saw him in this, of Old Deuteronomy in Cats. And, you know, I can remember he would welcome You're going to admit you saw Cats? I saw... I, some. Somebody brought me to see, see Cat's standing room when it opened. It was the thing to see. Uh, <laughs> and afterwards, you were allowed to go up on the stage. And I remember meeting this, I thought, this old man. He was about 28 years old at the time. <laughs> anyway, um, he won a Drama Desk Award for Outstanding Actor in a Musical and Ain't Misbehaven in 78. Harvey Firestein met him there. They became friends. And Harvey cast him as his best friend in the movie version of Torch Song Trilogy. He played drag artist... Marsha Dimes, <laughs> and Charles Pierce there played Birth of a Nation, but he's also fondly remembered as the voice of, voice of Oogie Boogie in The Nightmare Before Christmas in the movies. He, he toured the country with his cabaret act page by page, and people are really, uh, he was a beloved figure. He was in Showgirls, too, the movie. Right. Uh, and another Broadway star died at a much younger age. Gavin Creel died at the age of 48. There he is in, in his Olivier Award winning role in the London production of uh, The Book of Mormon. Rare Cancer uh, won a Tony for his role in Hello, Dolly. He was in Hair. Book of Mormon was his longstanding thing. He leaves a partner, Alex Temple Ward. He uh, wrote a memoir called Walk On Through, Confessions of a Museum Novice, and turned it into a show about getting to know the Metropolitan Museum. I'm sorry I missed that. I bet it was great. Um, he, he was you know, known as a superior singer with a sunny tenor from the time he starred in the original production of Thoroughly Modern Millie with Sutton Foster. He got his first Tony nomination as the straight son of the gay couple in La Caja Fall in 2004. He was a native of Findlay, Ohio. Um, he was a champion of LGBTQ rights. He co-founded the group Broadway Impact to support same-sex marriage back, yes. at, back when we needed that. And he said, you know, growing up in the Methodist church left him with scars and he worked his whole life to deprogram the pain and it gave him an aversion to organized religion. But he said he learned... Growing up uh, taught him how to be a team player. Uh, so he said, you're part of something. You're not the something. Well, now we want to celebrate the very much alive and kicking Justin Vivian Bond, who has been given a one of the so-called MacArthur Genius Grants, $800,000 over five years. Shocked, shocked, we say, there's Vivian uh, who goes by they, them, uh, and is uh, trans, non-binary. Uh, 61 years old. Legendary, legendary performer. Uh, probably first legendary for their uh, performances with Kenny Melman as, as Kiki and Herb, a very dissolute, older, uh, alcohol-soaked cabaret act. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen. Kenny on the left. I've seen many of their shows. They're just unbelievably hilarious and moving and terrific. Vivian is, is a genius uh, and a pioneer on so many levels and now doing more uh, of a wide range of performances, including we talked about their opera appearance in Germany uh, last year and a lot of cabaret performances, often at Joe's Pub, but all over the place. Well, cited by the MacArthur people for working in the cabaret tradition and leaving cultural uh, and leaving cultural critique and an ethic of care into performances. Oh, excuse me, weaving cultural critique and an ethic of care into performances that center queer joy. If you uh, ever have a chance to see Justin Vivian Bond run, do not walk to a box office. To credited with inspiring a younger generation of trans artists and performers. You can probably find uh, their Kiki and Herb performances on YouTube, I'm going to guess, and and you should watch. Uh, I don't think we have time for the uh, MacArthur Foundation video, but if you go on their website, Mac MacArthur Foundation, 
you can see the slightly biographical video of Vivian and a ton of other stuff on YouTube. And we'll link and to we'll it. We'll link to it in our email. Yeah. All right. Moving on to uh, international news. Uh, there's actually a very new headline in international news. The country of Georgia, the president, has refused to sign the anti-LGBTQ law uh, that was passed by the parliament. Uh, the bill goes back to the parliament. They may have the power and the will to uh, pass it anyway over the refusal of the president. But that's uh, that's pretty cool of the president to refuse to sign it. It is. Salome Zorabishvili. And um, elections not going our way too much these days, in, but in the Brandenburg state in Germany, the center-left Social Democrats of Chancellor Olaf Scholz just barely held off a win for the far-right alternative for Germany, which is dedicated to rolling back LGBTQ rights. Uh, the far-right won, in, uh, these are in state elections, in Thuringia three weeks ago, and almost in Saxony. So they're gaining ground. In Spain, the right-wing party, we learned, is now funded by a Hungarian bank li linked to Viktor Orban. Surprise, surprise. They were already funding Le Pen in France. The European Court of Human Rights has told Poland that they must recognize same-sex couples, uh, which is uh, an advance. And, I thought they were going to do that with this new government. Well, evidently they're dragging their feet because the Court of Human Rights has ordered them to do it. Uh, oh, and we, we told you last week that the British Medical Association had uh, condemned the CAS report that uh, supposedly said that uh, care for trans kids was questionable at best. Uh, the, we thought the British Medical Association was very brave to do that. Well, it inspired a lot of backlash and they have in fact received so much backlash on their uh, assessment that they have backed off to a neutral position. Yeah, exactly. So much uh, for science. Yeah. Yeah. Politics, much more important. All right. AIDS news. Well, in the, uh, you know, in the, in the walls, uh, Vance debate, uh, Vance said that Trump saved Obamacare, which was a 10 Pinocchio lie. But the real threat to Obamacare is going to come from these lawsuits that are now going to be filed that the Supreme Court got rid of the Chevron doctrine. Try to stay with this. They basically said agencies can't dictate all these regulations. We, the courts, will decide what's right and wrong. So all these corporations and the healthcare industry and many other places are gearing up to dismantle all those regulations uh, that have been imposed by uh, federal agencies. We've been telling you in the last few weeks about the drug uh, lenacapavir as a new preventive for HIV, two injections a year, no more daily pill. And this is flying through with such success uh, fast that Gilead, the manufacturer, uh, released an announcement saying that they had licensed six generic uh, pharmaceutical manufacturers to produce the drug uh, in generic form for distribution or sale to very poor and low income countries uh, at no profit to Gilead. Uh, now, this all sounds great, but this is Gilead, for one thing, trying to quarter the market for this drug before others come along to uh, supersede them. Uh, and it hasn't gotten FDA approval yet. They've applied for approval of it as both a preventive for HIV and a sort of last ditch uh, treatment for HIV for people who have run out of other uh, possibilities. So we're going to keep it one. You get it twice a year. Yes. We're going to keep a close eye on that, uh, and it's superficially good news, but there with Gilead, one always wonders. Entertainment news? Yes. Actor and comedian Rebel Wilson, 44, has married her partner, Ramona, uh, the founder of a sustainable- Agrama, Ramona Agrama. Uh, that's Ramona on the left, Rebel on the right. Right. Uh, they had a destination wedding in Porto Servo in Sardinia, Italy. 
They went public with their romance in 2022, got engaged last year. Wilson had a daughter, Royce, by a surrogate in November of 2022, and they've been raising her together. Yeah, congratulations to them. And congratulations to Jenna Lyons, former chief executive of J. Crew. Uh, she's the tall one on the left. She uh, is back for the second season of The Real Housewives of New York City, which no one, including her, can believe she's on but she's very popular there. And she was on Andy Cohen's Watch What Happens Live show this week, last night as we're taping. And he said, uh, you have a girlfriend, don't you? And she said, yes. And he said, well, are you gonna get married? And she said, well, maybe I don't need to. And he said, what? And she said, maybe I'm already married. And oh. it turns out that she and her girl, now wife, Cass Bird, did get married and congratulations to them. So Jean Smart was the host of SNL Saturday Night Live at the start of the 50th season and integrated into her opening that lesbians are obsessed with her and has had a lot of gay women fans and said, apparently, I do for Hacks as well. Uh, the show for which she just, Hacks is the show for which she just won an Emmy. Um, she Not noted- really and she noted her first play was an all lesbian cast uh, back in LA back in 70, excuse me, 83 by Jane Chambers last summer at Bluefish Cove. As you heard here first last week, uh, as we unearthed that, I thought the Saturday Night Live mention was a little snarky. She, uh, uh, you know, lesbians are obsessed with me. Well, you know, can't people like her? Uh, and male fans too. Uh, sure. Look, there's a, there are gay uh, men on the show. Erica, I believe. Her colleague on the show is bisexual in real life and on the show. Uh, there's a lot of LGBTQ content in Hacks. I've always liked Hacks. I've always liked uh, Gene Smart. There was just a little touch of snark I wasn't crazy about in that. Fanatical? Uh, Fanatical is the documentary, The Catfishing of Tegan and Sarah, which we mentioned last week, coming to Hulu on October 18th. I watched the trailer. It's, uh, it's pretty scary. It really is a very serious uh, documentary about how their identities were stolen and, and uh, how they were harassed and attacked. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing it, but uh, maybe through, you know, half closed eyes. Uh, and, you know, not much of a gay angle to the death of Maggie Smith, other than, again, uh, somebody I loved as a performer. Um, but one of her Tony, well, excuse me, Oscars was for California Suite, where she played an actress who lost an Oscar, but she's married to a character played by Michael Caine, who was bisexual. It was a rare mainstream depiction in 1978. And uh, HBO's Somebody Somewhere with Bridget Everett returns for season three on October 27th. And DC, sorry. Are we, are we out of time? Almost. Uh, DC is doing World Pride next spring, May to June. We'll see you uh, sooner than that next week. I right hope to be here. back in the studio. Yeah, bye.